thanks Alam. thanks for the con uh, confirmation good evening everyone uh, i'll just wait for uh, possibly a minute for everyone to join in uh, and then uh, and then we'll start so looking forward for an interesting discussion on the topic of chi running uh, so good to see everyone connecting in thank you so much for the messages uh yeah so not sure if uh, anyone has uh, anyone from the group has read the book of uh, uh chi running by danny driver so so that has got quite a lot of concepts uh, and i will also be talking a lot about this uh, very soon hi everyone i won't call out by names but uh, yeah thanks for the high messages uh Okay, uh, so I think it's a good time for me to start now uh, as everyone is joining. Can you please give me a confirmation that, uh, you know, you can hear well, uh, no disturbances. Uh, we'll appreciate that if you can just give me a confirmation on it. Looking good. Thank you. Uh, please confirm if, uh, if the audio is fine with everyone. I mean, everyone can hear it good. Give me a confirmation waiting for that. Okay, great. Thanks, Alpit, for that. Uh, fine. Uh, so, so let me just brief you about uh, uh, chi running. Uh, so, so the so the concept of chi running basically got introduced. Uh, from the uh, you would have heard of this uh, uh, the Chinese martial art called Tai Chi. Uh, so uh, so using Tai Chi is where uh, the concept of Chi running got introduced. So Tai Chi is the Ch Chinese martial art, uh, and and very important to understand is that uh, you know this martial art is not about the strength, the the muscular strength of the body. Uh, so uh, so if not about the muscular strength, then how how can you know one play the martial art? So so where does the strength can, come from? So the the, the strength basically uh, or tai chi originates from the core of the body. Uh, so I'm sure we understand what uh, what do we mean by the core of the body? Yeah. So if, if I just show you, if I just stand over here, I cannot go much. So this part. Uh, Okay, this T-shirt, a few of you might know about it. This is the Mumbai Road Runners T-shirt. So this part of the body is called as the core of the body. And, you know, the entire, uh, the entire uh, movement of the body originates from the core. Uh, so if, if, you know, simple things like when we walk, uh, when we walk uh, or, you know, when we run uh, or any games that we play or any body movement, uh, even even if you move left and right, uh, you know, on a circle, if you want to move forward, backward, uh, you know, they all originate from the core of the body. So let me just show you once again. You know, if I have to move forward, uh, moving forward is originates from the core. If, uh, if I have to lean backward, also originates from the core of the body. So a lot of the body movements uh, originates from the core. Uh, so uh, basically, running also is uh, you know is comes with a similar concept where uh, your movement, the running movement originates from the core. So Tai Chi, the basic concept of the martial art is that you don't need to have the muscular strength, uh, you know, to pick up a body and to throw it off. So it's not about the muscular strength, but uh, the uh, but it originates basically from the core. So the core will help you, uh, you know, give this, give the strength, the momentum, the energy to pick up someone and throw them off. Uh, so you know, in Tai Chi, uh, even people at, at the age of 60, 70, 75, 80 years are able to pick up people and throw them off. And where does all of that energy come from? Not from the muscles. Yeah, it comes from the originates from the core of the body. That's how the martial art works. So any animal movement, uh, you know, so 
again very important to understand the running is not nothing to do with the legs yeah so if, if you look at any animal animals like the cheetah the zebras the you know the uh, the lions the horses uh, look at their legs uh, what, what do they have do they have this super strong well built muscular legs any of these animals it's it's not right so it is all about uh, so the 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 strength that they get is from the spine the the spine of the body and not necessarily from the legs yeah their legs are very lean very lean very thin then unlike you know and the elephant who has got the probably the most uh, uh, most powerful leg uh, the elephant is not able to run as fast as any of the other animals so it very clearly indicates that it's not the legs which gives you you know the strong running movement uh, it is uh, you know it's basically the core of the body which gives you uh, the nice the nice movement so tai chi is a lot about it and danny dryer had attended the session of tai chi and that's where he understood this and he felt that a lot of the concepts that he heard that he learned in tai chi could be implemented in the running uh, so so uh, so that's where he you know started you know, analyzing it a lot into detail uh, and and looking at how the concept of tai chi could be applied on to running so so again running you know now very important to understand running uh, you know is not about power yeah running is not about power it's not about muscles it's not about using a lot of your muscular energy so i keep telling everyone you know the the heavy weights that you lift or uh, you know any of this gym activities where you focus on building up the muscles you know that is not something which will help uh, in running so because running is not about muscles uh, it is about the in fact it's exactly the opposite it is about the ease of running it's not it's not a power game running is not a power yeah when you run imagine yourself running you you know when you when you imagine yourself running you know what would be the best method of running is it using a lot of power and muscles and pushing yourself forward if you imagine if you are, you know if you are thinking of pushing yourself forward uh, you know with uh, with the muscles what would happen to you uh, just give a thought if you are if you are using a lot of muscular power in your runs what would be the end result of it you would probably be, be drained out much faster because uh, because you are not supposed to be using a lot of muscles uh, running is supposed to be it's normally said as the ease of running you know you, you need to be running as easy as efficient uh, again when we say efficient what does it mean uh, burn burn as little uh, burn as little energy as possible you know so when you run run so easy so nice so, you know it should be like a meditation you should feel yourself just sailing through and when you sail through what happens you know uh, you are not burning a lot of energy you know you are conserving a lot of energy within yourself you, are, you know you you need to run so when you use a lot of muscular power you know a lot of things you are actually only burning energy you may not be moving forward faster so always keep in mind that uh, yeah very good yeah uh, i see those messages coming in so using a lot of muscles only tires you yeah that's absolutely right so uh, you know so so minimize using run as easy as comfortable always run with a smile on your face you know you should look when you run people looking at you you should feel that there's such a grace in the person running is running easy is running natural and when you run easy and natural you're actually burning very little fuel so what's the advantage of burning very little fuel just give a thought what's the advantage you conserve a lot of fuel in your body so you still have a lot of fuel you can run a lot more yes that's right yeah so so you are actually you know the burning is very little and hence you can run much more distances 
far more comfortably. So, <coughs> so that's really important. Yeah. So, uh, you know, uh, run relaxed. So, you know, uh, I mean, again, to talk going back to muscles, uh, you know, when you run, run relaxed, you know, keep your muscles relaxed. When you meditate, don't you feel that, you know, your entire body is being, is actually relaxed. You know, you feel, you feel the blood flow through, blood flow through your entire body far more comfortably. In chi running, we say chi is an energy. Chi is an energy in your body which originates from the core. So we always say, let the chi flow to your body comfortably. So when, when your body is relaxed, when you, know, when you feel really comfortable, your chi is actually flowing from the toe of your leg till the head, till the crown of your head. You know, to the entire body, the chi should flow very comfortably. Yeah, so that's how, that's how relaxed you should feel. So, you know, anything that you do, anything that you do, uh, you know, so even when we do exercises, uh, you know, like, for example, I sometimes do the breathing workouts, you know, I hold my breath for some time. And, you know, if I hold myself tight, you know, it's going to make it more difficult. So you need to be, you know, just keep yourself relaxed. You'll find that you can hold your breath for far longer time. When a doctor gives you injection, when a doctor gives you injection, what does what is the first thing that the doctor tells you? Relax yourself. So because normally when they give you injection, you tighten up your muscles. Uh, so then the doctor says, don't tighten it up. Keep relax. So he also finds it easy to give you the injection. So, so it, these are all very simple examples on how relaxing your body. Again, when you are running uh, for long distances, yeah. So when you are exhausted, you you just you just tighten yourself up. You know, your muscles are tight. You are you know you feel exhausted. You probably muscles are tired. And just you know, just think of keeping yourself relaxed. Relax yourself. Say that you know I'm feeling good. Uh, use positive language and keep your uh, keep your body relaxed. Uh, you will be able to move ahead much more comfortably for longer distances. Uh, uh, that's basically you know, making it energy efficient and burning very little fuel. So that's one part of chi running. Yeah. Uh, so uh, relax. And what does relaxing help you? Another way, one is it burns less fuel. Second, most important thing is possibilities of injuries relaxes a lot. Uh, possibilities of injuries, uh, you know, when you're not, when your muscles are relaxed, uh, you know, your calves will be far more, uh, you know, uh, uh, relax your quads, your your uh, hip area, your you know, your joints will move far more easily. So, uh, very important that the joint movement should be, uh, you know, much more easier. Uh, so, the, so by relaxing, also your shoulders should be should feel relaxed. Everything should actually feel relaxed. Your complete body. And that helps you to be injury free. Uh, so that's so so that's one part as part of you know being relaxed, uh, uh, being relaxed and being comfortable. The second part is you know there's something called as a body alignment. Uh, so when you say alignment, we know that the entire body is actually one piece with multiple components. Uh, you know you have your arms, you have your legs, you have your flip, uh, your hip area your shoulders, you know, all of these are all interconnected. And there has to be a very good alignment in the full body. Uh, so what could be a wrong alignment? You know, anyone could think of, uh, you know, while running, uh, when I say it should be aligned, what, you know, can, you, can anyone give an example of what could be uh, a, an incorrect alignment? Uh, so one example, uh, one example is uh, when you are running forward. Um, you know a very common example that you will see among lot of lot of your friends. When you run forward, you might see that their body is leaning backward. Uh, so that's you would see that uh, especially when you are putting in a lot more effort in your running, you will find that you know your body is leaning backward. Uh, so that is an incorrect alignment. 
yeah another good one point put out is uh, a foot landing far ahead but that's a bit more technical uh, uh, you know your head movement you know when you run you will find a lot of people moving their head a lot moving ahead what's the disadvantage uh, i mean unnecessarily burning a lot of energy you're wasting uh, uh, you know so avoid keep your head relaxed let it go straight uh, your shoulders should also be relaxed you know in in chi running it said that think your shoulders like the headlamp of your car yeah so when your car is going forward do you see the car headlamp moving uh, in a left and right no you would see it going forward straight that's exactly how our shoulders should be you know assuming that there is light you know on your shoulders it should be moving straight you should not be moving your shoulders left and right yeah yeah that's a good point thanks lord man so yeah which uh, so don't so when you see when you tighten up your shoulders is when it is moving when it is relaxed it will be you know it will just go forward straight so when you are running look at those those things you know how is my shoulder i mean is it moving straight uh, you know is it comfortable feeling good so so that's 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 another part of the alignment your arm movement yeah uh, so arm movement is uh, i mean i always keep saying running is not about legs there are many 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 other aspects to be thought of you know so everyone thinks of you know we need to have very strong feet uh, our calves should be uh, calves and quads you know everyone keeps talking about all of those uh, but it is actually the entire body is one unit so just the legs you cannot run you need everything so your arm movements i always keep telling everyone you are better and more relaxed your arm movements much better can you run yeah it uh so so again in cheese running we say 50% of the effort is supposed to be on the upper part of the body and 50% is on the lower part um uh, so reduce the stress on your feet and let let the upper part of the body that's why you need to strengthen up your upper part also so a lot of people think that in, when they go to the gym i need to have strong feet that's that's really incorrect you know Uh, you need to have fit you know you need to have an overall very fit body so that's what is required so a uh, very good alignment on your arms you know uh, which which will reduce the effort on your feet so use your arms effectively such that you know the load on your feet reduces a lot uh, so again you know going a bit more technical into your arm movements uh, 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 you know your arm movements should be such that uh, you know uh, the the, uh, the uh, you know if i show you uh, at what angle should i is this um, is this a fine uh, movement or should it be here 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 so so uh, in chi running what we technically say is this angle should be 90 degrees or or slightly less than 90 degrees uh, you know that should be the angle that you need to maintain so less than 90 is better you know let me compare it with uh, you know okay uh, you know if you, if if you could try this if you stand and move your arms uh, so yeah if if you move your arms uh, which one will be easy like a pendulum if i move it while running is this easy or curving it into 90 degrees and running is this easy so think over it you know i would like everyone to think over it is this an easier method to run or keeping it at 90 and running which which of the two will be easier uh so i i cannot wait for your response but uh, but uh, keeping an angle of 90 degrees or slightly lesser than 90 degrees you'll find it far more easier uh, that's why uh, so that's why uh, uh, you know you'll notice uh, many of our friends you know uh, or even i myself you know i always earlier days my angle would always be around 100 to 110 degrees a lot of my photographs i it was so much visible i've i've seen uh, i've seen uh, uh, you know my photographs where you know especially when i'm tired my arms are you know always more than 100 degrees and i always keep telling myself please reduce it to 90 so I, when all my training runs whenever i run i i ensure that you know i keep it at 
at a 90 degree and run and it becomes far more efficient you are you are making it far more easier uh, for your uh, for your feet yeah you are reducing the load from the feet uh, uh, yeah, so uh, there's a question uh, Prabhakara is asking, can you, and, uh, yeah, but before I go to this question, you know, just a few more points that I want to make, uh, you know, so, so, uh, so saying that the alignment of the body, the entire body need to be acting as a single unit. Yeah, if, if your head is not, if your head is, everything else is fine, but your head is, you know, not in alignment to your body, you make it difficult for, for your one, uh, you know, for your full body to move forward. Uh, or if your shoulders are moving, uh, imagine, you know, every step, if your shoulders keep moving, how many steps you do in a 5K or in a 10K or, you know, if you're running a 21K, how, how many steps and that many times your shoulder is moving. Imagine the waste of energy in that. Yeah. So, so that, you know, so keeping in mind uh, all those factors, run as a single unit forward. Uh, you know, another very important point I would like to focus on is your breathing. Your breathing, very important and it's not really very difficult. I mean, you need to focus on it. Uh, uh, the breathing should not be really very heavy. Yeah, heavy breathing uh, and, and chest breathing. When do you do chest breathing? What does it mean? Usually chest breathing is when, uh, when you're breathing from your mouth. Uh, so when you're uh, breathing from your mouth is when you say you're chest breathing. So uh, if, it's, if you look at your lungs, uh, you know, if you're doing a chest breathing, you're just using th the top 30% of your lungs. The remaining 70%, you're not even utilizing it. So, so, it's, um, so chest breathing, heavy chest breathing only will tire you more and more and more. Uh, if you look someone running nice and efficient, you would never see them, you know, do that in a heavy chest breathing because uh, that doesn't work. You, I mean, what I follow or even in uh, even in chi running, the uh, the the concept uh, promoted is to use the concept of three plus two. Uh, so three plus two. Uh, so yeah, that's right. So when we are, uh, you know, one of the messages I see, when you are gasping for breath is when you actually do chest breathing. But in fact, it makes it even more difficult. So that's where you really need to learn to run a bit more relaxed um, and try to focus on, uh, you know, on uh, inhaling through your nostrils, inhaling and exhaling through your nostrils. So, so most of my training runs, or I mean, at least 75% of my training runs I focus, you know, on few parameters. One of them is uh, nostril breathing. At least 75, 80 percent of my distance should be to nostril breathing. You know, again, one big advantage I'll tell you of nostril breathing. You know, uh, I don't know how many of you have noticed it. Uh, when you when you do a no, uh, when you uh, breathe when you exhale from your mouth, keep a mirror in front of you. Keep a mirror in front of you and just one exhale. On the mirror, uh, what happens? Uh, what would you see on the mirror? You would see the water, uh, you know, so uh, the uh, the moisture on the mirror, right? When you exhale from your mouth on the mirror, when you look at it, you can see the uh, the the vapor layer being formed over there. Um, so, what does that mean? When you exhale from your mouth, imagine. Uh, the water which you are, uh, you know, doing it through one, uh, yeah, through one breath itself. So you're breathing at least, uh, you know, the number of you're breathing almost equivalent to the number of steps that you take. So uh, you, you are inhaling, exhaling, um, uh, almost. So if you are taking approximately 180 steps, so uh, so you are, you know, so th that you know almost that many times is the total number of inhale, exhale. And that much you are dehydrating yourself by exhaling through your mouth. So that's where you really need to conserve a lot of energy by exhaling through your nostrils. So if you exhale from your not through your nostrils and do it in front of the mirror, you'll never find it like, uh, like you know the moisture or uh, uh, you never find that moisture or the foggy layer on the mirror because when you exhale through your nostrils, that doesn't happen. It's only when you exhale through your mouth 
you know there's a lot of dehydration and that itself uh, you know you can imagine how much uh, you know you're dehydrating yourself so many times you would have heard me say that you know i run i can run 21 kilometers very comfortably without drinking water so i try to be as energy efficient as possible and one of the factors of energy efficiency is uh, how do you breathe so as i said almost 80 percent i uh, breathe through my nostrils only uh, during most of my training runs uh, so so that's why uh, you know try try i mean it's really not difficult you need to be focused on it yeah just focus uh, relax take uh, you know uh, three in uh, three in and two out so three plus two uh, is a good uh, formula that you can try if you're feeling exhausted then take two in one out uh, if you're feeling exhausted so so that is also you know that method of breathing will also make it uh, you know make it comfortable for you uh, and and anyone looking at you running itself will say that this person is not putting in a, you know some of them will be putting in a lot of effort you know they'll be struggling with the breathing and all those things you're actually making it more difficult for yourself we know it right all of us we are just making it more difficult because we are burning far more uh, far more energy with all this uh, with all this you know uh, inconsistent movements uh, yeah i mean there's a good question been asked if you know if one is running fast yeah for sure if you are running fast then uh, then breathing will always be a struggle but but every run of yours cannot be fast right so so fast runs will be an exception there you will struggle i mean there's no magic possible but at least whenever you are doing all your uh, your training runs which is at a me easy or medium pace like my medium pace uh, you know uh, so if, let's say if i'm doing a uh, 21k as long as, I mean, as long as I can run a 21k in one hour uh, 40 minutes or uh, one hour even one hour 37 minutes or something I can run almost 80 percent plus of the distance only to comfortably to nostril breathing uh, so it's a it's a tra I mean that's for me but my level but you know you need to identify at your levels what is your easy run and and focus on a nice nostril breathing uh, so so do it uh, you know uh, so run relax so yeah i mean in there's a lot of concepts but you know in general these are some of the very basics uh, very basics so uh, yeah someone is asking me to explain three plus two breathing so three plus two is basically you know you inhale so you inhale three times exhale two times yeah so so that's what we mean by three plus two so when we run take three breaths in and then uh, going further take two breaths out so that's what we mean by three plus two you could google and find out uh, you know breathing uh, you you would get that three plus two breathing uh, and uh, yeah uh, all, all i mean even better you can ask a lot of your you know the experts over there they will all tell you what is you know how important is breathing and breathing by itself is a very big subject you know people can talk about breathing by itself almost uh, a two or three day program only about breathing so it's such a huge subject it takes people years and years to master so i mean i still struggle a lot with breathing even though i mean at my pace which i would love to do i mean i, I struggle a lot on breathing but but during my training runs, you would usually never see me struggling because training runs, I focus, uh, I am extremely a technical person. All my training runs, I am highly technical. So, uh, so I focus on all these parameters during my training runs. Uh, yeah, so that's right. I mean, uh, so when you do nostril breathing, you cannot run fast. Uh, you can either run fast all you do nostril breathing so you have to decide what do you want so if your focus is on nostril breathing take it easy run relax run comfortably at least start off with two kilometers uh, two kilometers of nostril breathing um, uh, the initial two three four five six seven kilometers you can always try nostril breathing one disadvantage of nostril breathing is you cannot talk to anyone because the moment you open your mouth you are going to breathe through your mouth 
yeah the, uh, so so if if you want nostril breathing your mouth has to be shut your mouth has to be closed you cannot even smile uh, at least that's that's the challenge which i face so i'm i'm running in my own you know i'm like in my own world i'll be running uh, and uh, and i run okay i don't know i think uh, is the screen uh, disappeared or how is it okay uh, so i'm not sure if you can see me uh, i think Uh, uh, let me know how it is. Uh, okay, yeah, I'm sorry. Now I can see. Uh, I can see a few things. Uh, I mean, there were some questions. Uh, uh, da, 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 da. Let me just have a look. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, you know, there were uh, my laptop. I don't know. Even once I had uh, previously, I had a similar issue. After 30 minutes, my camera just gives me a problem. Uh, Fine. Uh, let me look at the questions. Uh, you know, I just need to look. Uh, I just ha I have my laptop here. Uh, uh, yeah. So uh, just let me know if there are any specific questions which I can address. Uh, you know, so I, in general, I talked about efficient running, uh, you know, efficient and uh, effective running, which basically ensures that, uh, you know, which basically ensures that, uh, you, you know, you, you are running um, injury free, you are burning very little, as little fuel as possible. So that's what basically, you know, uh, relaxed running helps. Uh, again, running is not about uh, as I mentioned, running is not about using muscles. It is running as comfortable as relaxed. Uh, breathing should be, uh, you know, breathing should be as easy as possible. Your bo entire body should be in alignment. So these are the basic concepts uh, on uh, on chi running. So if there are any specific questions that you have, you know, feel free. We can discuss that for a couple of uh, minutes uh, before we uh, we finish this session. So, um, I mean, in, in general, uh, again, see, uh, the very good example which I normally give is when we are starting at, uh, when we are standing at the start line, uh, you know, uh, so when we have to run forward, what is the first thing in our body which moves? You know, you really need to be sure of that. You know, what is the first thing in our, imagine all of us standing in the start line, you are standing over there, uh, and you want to move forward. Uh, so, so if you are moving forward, what is the first thing in your body that will move forward? Uh, so, normally, you know, uh, almost 90% of the folks whom, with whom I have discussed it, they will say that my leg will be the first thing that will move. Uh, so I always say that, you know, that's where it is. So uh, I always keep saying running is not about using your feet. So it's not about using your legs to move forward, but it is actually supposed to be using, uh, you know, using your core of your body to take you forward. So it should actually be your core which is taking you forward and not your legs. So we always think that it's a legs which makes us move, you know, uh, which makes us run. So, uh, so all those who do a lot of, uh, I mean, lo a lot of core strengthening workouts, or who understands the importance of, of the core, would always, uh, you know, uh, will always vouch for that. That 
your code is the most important component uh, for moving forward. So, uh, yeah. Uh, so, uh, it, I'm not sure. I'm, I'm not. I'm not sure if I can see the questions, uh, but I can see. Uh, yeah. You know, Harsha, I see your question. So you missed, I think, the previous part. Uh, you know, when I was uh, live, in, I was live previously. So. So I, I specify, talked a lot about uh, nostril breathing. So yeah, uh, you know, breathing is supposed to be only nostril, on, nostril breathing only. At least I personally, all my training runs, I promote that uh, you know you should breathe only through your nostrils. So so I am I am a hardcore uh, you know nostril breathing person. But uh, you know, as someone had asked me, during, when you are running fast. Uh, you cannot, uh, you, nostril breathing is not possible and I fully agree to it. Um, you know, you cannot, uh, at a very intense pace, if you are, if you are doing your intervals or your tempo, uh, impossible for you to do nostril breathing, but at least when you are doing a training run at a relaxed pace, at an easy or medium pace run, uh, you should be focusing on nostril breathing. So, uh, I, mean, I had mentioned about 3 plus 2 uh, as a pattern that I normally use. Uh, or if you are running a bit more fast, or if you are you know, if you are a bit more tired, you could use two plus one uh, as a nostril uh, as a method of breathing. Uh, yeah. Uh, I mean, yeah. So Rodman uh, is asking, what sh what is the uh, distance that one should run uh, enough to practice? So I mean, uh, you try. You have to try it out yourself. Uh, uh, so go out for the, you know any day when you're feeling relaxed, when you're feeling comfortable, when you're feeling good. Go out for the 2k, 3k, 5k, easy run, and your focus should be on 100% of that distance. Try as it's really not difficult. It's more of a mental block. Try 100% of that 5 kilometers or 3 kilometers, or 4 kilometers, whatever you're doing. Run relaxed. Run easy and do only nostril breathing. Close your mouth, don't talk to anyone because the moment you talk, you will use, you will, uh, use your mouth to breathe. So, uh, so yeah, so just go and tomorrow itself, you know, uh, just within your house in indoor, just do a short run, easy, nice, relaxed. Within the house, it will be a little difficult uh, because you really don't have a, uh, you know, uh, a place where you can run, you know, like it should be like a meditation. Running should be like a meditation. Uh, you know, you should really enjoy it. So within the house, you, it's a lot of constraints uh, that you're running in. So uh, try it out. Just try at least 500 meters if you can do a nostril breathing uh, and, and it should be fine. Uh, yeah, any tips for new runners? Uh, I mean, I, I, it's all about, uh, you know, running again is not just about, uh, you know, uh, again, I, again repeating the same thing. It's not just about, uh, uh, you know, uh, just about the feet and running forward. There are a lot of factors. So, uh, I, you know, have a overall reasonably a fit body. You need to do a warm up. Uh, you know, you just cannot just cannot uh, start your run like that. So you need to keep your body warmed up uh, uh, and run relaxed. Uh, focus on multiple. You know, so I, as I said previously, for me, running is extremely technical. I focus on a lot of things when I run. You know, I, I mean, uh, so I, I I check how am I breathing. How is my body movement happening? Am I running relaxed? Am I feeling happy? Am I feeling good? Uh, uh, you know, usually I never, I ne for, for distances like 21 kilometers, you know, 21, 22, 23 odd kilometers, I don't even carry a water bottle. Uh, the reason I don't carry is so that I try to run as efficient as possible. Uh, you know, really important. So, if you're not going to have water, you need to ensure that you don't dehydrate and you need to think of methods on how not to dehydrate yourself. And the best way of that is, um, is uh, the proper nostril breathing. It minimizes, uh, uh, your, uh, you know, it minimizes uh, your uh, uh, dehydration possibilities. So, I'm, uh, yeah, I'm so sorry. I, you know, I cannot see the questions uh, uh, because 
let me check uh, let me check okay treadmill or road running it's individual you know based on what are the uh, what are the options you have i would never be a treadmill runner because in reality we always run uh, on the uh, uh, in reality we always are road runners tarmac runners or trail runners so i i i find road running far more easier far more good uh, i cannot run much on the treadmill uh, your in, your take on indoor running during the lockdown period i have never run indoor i have never run in my house i cannot i mean for me running is supposed to be a meditation i cannot do that when i am inside the house running you know between the blocks and this and that i mean i have reasonably good space to run but for me that's not running so i would always prefer to do any other uh, any other workout rather than run in that constrained space of you know Uh, small loops uh, it's not my method of running so uh, uh, do you think uh, long time no running will decrease the performance in the future okay that's a good question you know uh, so not running for a month or two you know does it i mean there are so many cases where you know professional runners olympians have been injured and they have not run for over 6 months uh, plus uh, the best example that i can give is uh, our nitendra singh rawat uh, our olympian the the fastest runner of uh, you know in in our tmm event uh, nitendra singh rawat uh, i think after the olympics he was injured for almost uh, almost 6 uh, to 9 months uh literally no running at all all his friends uh, were were so active in the training but he just could not uh, train himself for over 6 to 9 months uh, and then uh, if you remember this year was it i think it was this year uh, that he uh, this year or the last year uh, that he again came out in uh, you know with minimal training he again came out as a winner of the event so i seriously don't think that uh, being uh, not going out for runs for a period of one or two months is going to make a significant uh, impact on your performance all will be good so so be positive and uh, and uh, uh, and you should you will get back into your original routine uh so uh, what else i'm sorry uh Oh, I'm so sorry. I cannot repeat back into the concepts of cheese running, which I, had, you know, uh, explained quite a lot. Uh, but uh, yeah. Any uh, any other questions? Let me just check. Uh, what are the? Yeah, music running again. There's a discussion happening on that. I would, you know, again uh, for me, uh, it's it's all about meditation. So. personally i am not comfortable with having music also with safety point of view i know cases i see this in know of cases where accidents have happened uh, uh, with uh, with runners running with the uh, you know with the music on so it's not that without the music on accidents wouldn't happen but the possibilities of accidents increases a lot if you are running with your music uh, uh, so uh yeah so i personally don't recommend running with music on uh, okay another question uh, you know can it should it be trained on flat routes or on hill runs uh, again uh, you know you really need to know the technique uh, it's basically okay one more thing which i you know which i missed out specifying chi running is lot about running like a kid you know kids run the best you know you look at kids run I, you know, my jaws just drop off when I see a kid run anywhere in front of me. They run perfect. I mean, unimaginable in some of the situations. I wish I could record them. You know, where they are not conscious about me recording, and then they run natural. They run exactly with all the concepts that I talk of in my chi running sessions. So most natural. So kids learn by by default. They know the most natural method of running. Um, and as they grow up. 
you know, with our uh, lifestyle where we have absolutely no, uh, you know, uh, I mean, with sitting in a particular place, you know, no proper uh, body movements, our muscles get lot stiff so and we have completely lost the natural method of running that's where tree running you know these principles we try to bring back those concepts of natural method of running so uh, uh, so that, that's again so how many times uh, hill runs do you recommend a week i recommend you know a hill run once in two to three weeks once in three weeks is good uh, a hill run or once a month is also good do a good intense intense so a hill run is not just about running on the hills but doing it as a proper drill so you can do your intervals uh, uh, do your interval sort of a sort of a workout so what i normally do in a hill run is you know i let's say i break it up into 50 percent so if i do let's say uh, five plus five you know ten loops so initial five loops uh, while going up i do it fast and while coming down i do a recovery jog uh, that I'll do it for the first five repeats and the next five repeats uh, while going up I do it easy while coming down I I run fast so so that's how uh, that's how I do my uh, hill workouts so do it uh, I mean hill workouts uh, strain a lot on the on on your body so do not recommended to do it often possibly a uh, maximum is uh, twice a month maximum once a month is also good enough uh, there are so many other workouts that can be done. You can have your intervals, your tempos, your fart legs. Uh, there, there are, and you need your long runs and your easy runs. So all of this, you will have a very tight schedule. So, uh, so hill runs, uh, don't do it very often. Uh, anything else? Yeah, um, yeah. Yeah, I'm um, not sure if there are any more questions that we need to address. Uh, okay, is it fine to run inside closed gated community during COVID? Um, I don't have a good answer to that. Uh, ideally, you should. No one should be. Uh, no one should be running out. Yeah, that's. Uh, uh, I mean, I am just seriously, I have not run even once uh, in the past six weeks uh, or over six weeks now, I think. Uh, so I have never gone out, not even, not even 100 meters I have gone outside for the run. I have done step drills. I do a lot of, uh, I mean, once or twice a week, I do step drills inside my house. Uh, I, you know, in my Insta, once, I'm not sure in Facebook if I had posted, yeah, I think in Facebook also I had posted once the step drills I do at home. Um, I know even Sunil Shetty keeps putting in uh, quite, he also does quite some step drills. So, so doing it once a week and all should be fine. Uh, speed running, how often in a week? Uh, once is good, uh, depending on how fit your body is. Uh, surely not more than two times a week, uh, you know, intense running. So. Intense running is quite uh, quite challenging for you. If you have a very fit body, if you have got a good running background, you know you can do twice a week. Uh, and if you do proper warm ups, proper cool downs, uh, you know if you are doing your strengthening workouts, if you if you know that you have a fit body, then you can do it twice a week. Uh, no harm in doing you know intense workout because your body is capable to handle that. But if you are new to running, you should do it not more than once a week. Uh, is it advisable to keep a watch uh, heart rate uh, uh, watch on heart heart rate while running? Yeah, lots of principles. It is really, I mean, theoretically, yes, absolutely. I mean, theoretically, practically both. I mean, heart rate is one of the very important things. So, uh, I mean, it's a very good parameter to be aware of. You should you should know what kind of heart rate should be maintained. So, yeah, I mean, uh, your heart rate uh, it should not be fluctuating a lot. So. Uh, uh, so yeah, so, uh, so please uh, please keep an eye on the heart rate. Yeah, breathing pattern. I had already talked a lot about it, so I really don't want to repeat the same again. Uh, anything else? I think uh, a minute. It's it's eight o'clock now. It's a good time for us to close. Uh, it was a very interesting discussion. Thank you so much, everyone, for joining in.
uh, really enjoyed this. Apologies that you know my video gave me a problem in between, so we just got a, uh, a, a disruption in between. So thank you, thank you so much, uh, and hope we all get take care of uh, take good care of yourself. Don't be in a hurry to really run on the roads. You know, taking care of the community is really very important as of now. Yeah, so my serious advice is, you know, don't be on the roads. Uh, focus a lot on your fitness. There are hundreds of fitness workouts that you can do, and Ram is already doing a lot uh, with respect to fitness uh, uh, in the group. So please follow that. Uh, be get stronger. Uh, be fit. Get strong, and we'll all be back into action very soon. Thank you all, and take care. Have a wonderful evening ahead. Bye.